Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back once again to The Correct Views. Um, I want to give a shout out to David Lake at Media Speaks. He did a video. He didn't send a picture, but he did do a video where he held up a card and had all the food advertisements of the meat that he intended to eat on Agenda, uh, Agenda 21, the UN motion. They want us, to, uh, especially in LA, to not eat meat. I'm not in LA, but he's awful close. And they want us to not eat meat on Mondays. I think it's utter ridiculous madness. So, the Media Speaks gets promoted on this show for a week. Why? Because he sent him a video of himself preparing to eat meat on a Monday. If you eat meat on Monday, I will promote your favorite charity on this show for a week. Come on, let's give it to the UN and let them know what we think about Agenda 21. And if you don't know what Agenda 21 is, do yourself a favor. The moment this video ends, you need to go and look that up. Um, I also want to give a shout out quickly to uh, Tara and the people that do the Canton Money Bob and the Conestoga Room. Guys, it was a wonderful event. Support the people in this community that are still here because Ohio is not doing well, people. And if you don't believe me, go try to go to the Burger King downtown or the News Depot. You can't because they're gone, can you? So support the businesses that are down there, people. Um, here we go real quick. This is from the salon. I love this. Vulture capitalism, not unions, kill Twinkies. Um, this is an article that you're definitely going to want to go and read, but I want to go ahead real quick and uh, like, like give you the high points of this. Basically, the people that run Hostess ask the unions to take less, and they did. Meanwhile, the people that own this sinking ship were making millions. When they came back and asked the unions for more concessions, that's when they said no. They were turning a $35,000, $40,000 a year job into a $25,000 a year job. They were cutting their medical benefits and they were expecting the hostess employees to be okay. No, maybe if you make millions of dollars as the CEO of Hostess, maybe you should Freeze your money and not get one damn cent because you are obviously not doing your job right. Your employees are doing things exactly perfect. They are the ones that have your recipes with your logos, with your packaging. You, this is your product. You should be the one not taking money. And this whole story on unions, I knew it was going to come out. Like I said last video, unions ask for way too much. But at the same time, we need unions or we end up with Walmart. And uh, listen to this. The exact opposite of the tale pushed by those on the right, meaning anti-unions. It's the story of two bankruptcies, hundreds of millions of givebacks from hostess unions, and hundreds of millions of debt piled onto a company by venture capitalists. It's a story of management that boosted its own salaries while failing to make agreed upon payments into workers pension funds. And it's a story of changing tastes and diets. Are you people hearing me? One 14-year veteran of the company describes $150 million annual givebacks that the union agreed to in 05 before concessions. He says, I made $48,000 last year. I made $34,000. Pensions and health care were cut as well, with labels to labor's total loss equaling $110 million annually. Following the massive givebacks, a private equity company called Rippleward Holdings bought the company out of bankruptcy for $130 million and sank them. It did awful. It did terrible. Um, and let me, let me see what they made. The CEO who led the company into bankruptcy, he got a pay raise while Hostess pushed a 30% salary and benefit cut onto its employees. 
a previous failed chief executive, Brian J. Driscoll, was pushed out, but only after the board tripled his pay package to $2.55 million. So when you don't have hostess, don't go blaming the unions. Blame the people that already took money from the people that work there. They conceded to it, and then you still cheated them, wanted them to take less, and paid the people that put them in that position more, three times as much. I can't even read any more of this. Go to the article and read it, because if I have to read any more, I'm going to have an aneurysm. Um... And furious. I'm going to move on to Fukushima news. I have been neglecting my Fukushima news, and I should not be. And since I'm already angry, um, uh, make sure you listen to Radchick on WAN. It's called Fallout is More Than You Think, dated 11 14 12. Um, if you voted for President Obama and you can listen to the first 12 minutes of this video and not be hanging your head in shame, then you have no conscience and no soul. Evil, people. Evil does exist. And just because some of you don't want to believe in it does not mean that it's any less real. Um, a lot of these are two in a row from Fukushima Diary. Albino white crow found in Oda City, Chimane. Now, why does that matter? Well, albino crow was found in Onaha City, Chimane. It's completely white with blue eyes. It is a mutation of the jungle crow. They found these in Chernobyl. It says the mutation of ratio jumped to 15% in the Ukraine. So... We have accelerating cancers and accelerating thyroid problems among 43, almost 44% of the children in Japan. They are moving and burning the waste all over. There are reports of them deliberately feeding the food to elementary children to prove that it is safe. That's nice. Why don't you go into the school and push a kid down the steps to prove that that's safe? You people are idiots! And, I mean, it took a long time for the white crow to mutate in Chernobyl. It has not taken long for that to happen in Fukushima. You already have cancers. They have famous actors and actresses falling over like dominoes out there. And nobody seems to care. Of course, it's washing into the West Coast, and I have said this for a long time, and I stand by it. If you live on the West Coast of the United States, or the West Coast of Alaska, I know it is the United States, or Hawaii, you are bringing your lifespan down. Your quality of life is going down when you have children, whether you're male or female, because it affects sperm as well as eggs. You will be passing on unhealthy genes to your kid, and this will happen every second that you stay there. In 25 years, when cancer blows up, you will see people leaving mega cities like San Diego and Los Angeles. These places are going to be ghost towns compared to what they are now. I am going to be right on this, and I wish to God that I wasn't. Um, the second thyroid cancer patient is female, 16 to 18 years old. Once again, Fukushima Diary, a hero, writes this page, by the way. He was poisoned from his home and left with basically no clothes and a laptop and uh, moved away from the poison. Why? Because he's intelligent. Fukushima Diary reported the second thyroid cancer patient in Fukushima on 11-18-12, the Health Management Committee of Fukushima reported that it was 16 to 18 years old and female. Yeah, thyroid cancer, the uh, second one now among uh, younger people, just within the last month or so, I think. Perfectly normal, right? Yeah, it's going to be normal as it goes on and on and on and on. There are people who went to study. There's this black sludge that's all over Tokyo. They went to study it, now they're going blind. Look these things up. I'm not here to lie to you. The reason I'm still here, the reason I still get mad views, the reason I'm on Media Speaks is because I don't lie. That's 
all backed up, people. This is from Natural News. Uh, Ethan A. Huff, American Academy of Pediatrics, says pesticides aren't bad for babies. They should eat more. For the very first time, the American Academy of Pediatrics has come forward with an official position on organic foods and their role in childhood health and development. But rather than encourage parents to avoid buying pesticide-laden conventional foods, the group, which openly admits that conventional produce is loaded with toxic pesticides, says parents should keep on feeding their children conventional produce despite the dangers involved. Here's their reasoning on this, because you don't want to see me read, stand here, blah, 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 read away. You want to know what is the correct view. So go there, look up what I'm talking about. I've already told you where to find it. Natural News, American Academy of Pediatrics says pesticides aren't bad for babies. Well, there's two ways to look at this. Their way says the reason is 